stipulations. Only personnel and correct military attire will be served in this mess. Pick up their chow. The casting process for the 1976 TV series, Black Sheep Squadron, was a careful selection of talents to bring authenticity and charm to this classic. Robert Conrad, an experienced actor, was a natural fit for the lead role of Gregory Boynton. His charisma and tough guy image impressed the producers. For the role of Boynton's second-in-command, Major Jerry Bragg, Simon Oakland was chosen aider known for his strong screen presence. Oakland had previously worked with Conrad, which helped establish their on-screen chemistry. Casting the young pilots required a balance of talent and youthful energy. Dirk Blocker, who played Don French, was selected for his ability to convey both innocence and determination. Jeff McKay, cast as Bob Anderson, had a knack for physical comedy, which added levity to the show. Wei Ching-ho, who played Lieutenant Chong, was one of the few female cast members. She brought grace and resilience to her role, providing a unique perspective in a predominantly male cast. Chemistry tests played a crucial role in finalizing the cast. The producers looked for not only individual talent, but also how well the actors worked together. For instance, the camaraderie between Conrad and Oakland was undeniable, and their past collaboration proved invaluable. Pivotal moments during auditions also influenced casting decisions. James Whitmore Jr., who played Pappy Boyington in the original TV movie, was initially considered for the series. However, when the show was picked up, the producers decided to recast the role with Conrad, opting for a more seasoned actor to lead the series. In the end, the cast of Black Sheep Squadron was a harmonious blend of talent and chemistry, creating a timeless show that continues to captivate audiences. This island in 10 or 12 hours or large is going to drop a net on us anyway. I figure it's going to take them at least that long to have the edge. The director of Black Sheep Squadron, Edward Abraham Buzz Kulik, brought a unique vision to this classic TV series. With a background in directing both films and television, Kulik had a knack for creating compelling stories that resonated with audiences. Kulik's approach to Black Sheep Squadron was heavily influenced by his love for aviation. As a private pilot himself, he was able to bring a level of authenticity to the show's aerial scenes that was unmatched at the time. He worked closely with the cast and crew to ensure that every detail was accurate, from the planes themselves to the way the pilots moved and spoke. One of Kulik's key creative influences was the real-life story of the VMA-214 Black Sheep Squadron, a Marine Corps fighter squadron that served in the Pacific during World War II. He was fascinated by the squadron's history and the men who served in it, and he wanted to bring their stories to life in a way that was both entertaining and respectful. Kulik's style was characterized by his attention to detail and his commitment to authenticity. He was known for his meticulous preparation and his ability to create a positive and collaborative atmosphere on set. He worked closely with the show's writers, producers, and actors to ensure that every aspect of the show was true to life. One of Kulik's most notable collaborations was with Robert Conrad, who starred as Major Gregory Pappy Boynton in Black Sheep Squadron. Kulik and Conrad had a strong working relationship, and Conrad has said that Kulik was instrumental in helping him create the character of Pappy Boynton. Together, they were able to bring a level of depth and complexity to the show that was rare for its time. In addition to his work on Black Sheep Squadron, Kulik directed a number of other classic TV shows and films, including The Virginian, The Fugitive, and Brian's Song. His contributions to the world of television and film have left a lasting impact, and his legacy continues to inspire directors and storytellers today. Not be sure. No, I suppose not. Trust is all. The 1976 TV series Black Sheep Squadron is a classic that many people hold dear in their hearts. Did you know that there are many funny, shocking, and sad facts about this series that you might not be aware of? So, keep watching this video to learn more. Do you have a cherished memory associated with this TV series? When was the first time you watched Black Sheep Squadron? Maybe it was during its initial run, or perhaps you discovered it later in life. No matter when you first watched this classic, it has likely left a lasting impression on you. Whether it's the thrilling aerial combat scenes, the camaraderie between the characters, or the historical context, there's something about Black Sheep Squadron that resonates with viewers. Perhaps you have a particularly cherished memory or personal experience related to this TV series. Maybe you and your family would gather around the TV every week to watch it together. Or maybe you had a favorite character that you always rooted for. Whatever your connection to Black Sheep Squadron, we would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. 
So be sure to share your thoughts and experiences with us. And don't forget to keep watching this video to learn more fascinating facts about Black Sheep Squadron. You won't want to miss it. Are you sure, Bob? Yeah. Well, I will show you, Captain Gutter Man. What Bobby Addison likes to do. The production of Black Sheep Squadron was a massive endeavor, with several moving parts. The set design was meticulously crafted to replicate the Pacific Theater during World War II. Producers paid great attention to detail, ensuring everything from the aircraft to the soldiers' uniforms was historically accurate. Filming took place in various locations, including the famous Santa Clarita Studios in California. Outside studio sets, the crew also filmed on location at a former naval air station in San Diego, providing an authentic backdrop for many scenes. One logistical challenge faced by the production team was filming airborne scenes. To capture realistic aerial combat sequences, they employed a unique technique. They used radio-controlled model planes equipped with cameras, which allowed for more control and safety during filming. Another innovative approach was the use of large water tanks for filming scenes set on aircraft carriers. These tanks, built at the studio, enabled the crew to create the illusion of a vast ocean without leaving the controlled environment of the studio. Despite these advancements, producing this classic series wasn't without its challenges. Coordinating numerous actors, extras, and crew members, along with managing complex equipment and set pieces, required careful planning and execution. However, through determination and creativity, the team behind Black Sheep Squadron successfully brought the thrilling tales of the Marine Fighting Squadron VMF-214 to life on screen. He's gonna fix it for you? Yeah, if I help him. Otherwise, he's gonna strip it for... The Black Sheep Squadron, a classic television series, first aired in 1976 and quickly gained popularity. This show, set during World War II, follows the adventures of a group of misfit pilots known as the Black Sheep Squadron as they navigate dangerous missions and learn to work together as a team. The series was inspired by the true story of Marine Fighter Squadron VMF-214, led by Gregory Pappy Boyington. In the show, Robert Conrad portrays Boyington, who leads a group of young, inexperienced pilots against the Japanese forces in the Pacific. The show is known for its realistic portrayal of aerial combat and its focus on the personal lives and struggles of the characters. The Black Sheep Squadron was praised for its talented cast, which included Dirk Blocker, Jeff McKay, and James Whitmore Jr. These actors brought depth and complexity to their roles, making the characters relatable and engaging for viewers. The show also featured impressive aerial stunts and special effects, which added to the excitement and intensity of each episode. Despite its success, the Black Sheep Squadron only ran for two seasons, but it has left a lasting impact on the world of television. The show's themes of camaraderie, perseverance, and heroism continue to resonate with audiences today. The Black Sheep Squadron remains a classic example of high-quality storytelling and action-packed entertainment. The show was created by Stephen J. Cannell, who was known for his ability to create compelling characters and exciting storylines. Cannell's talent for writing and producing is evident in The Black Sheep Squadron, which remains a standout example of his work. In conclusion, The Black Sheep Squadron is a classic television series that offers a unique and exciting look at the lives of a group of misfit pilots during World War II. With its talented cast, impressive aerial stunts, and engaging storylines, this show continues to captivate audiences today. Whether you're a fan of historical dramas or action-packed adventures, The Black Sheep Squadron is definitely worth a watch. Why don't you just shut up and go back to doing your job? I mean, you want to fly with them, guys? The creation of the Black Sheep Squadron score and soundtrack was a collaborative effort between composers Dominic Frontier and Pete Rugolo. Frontier, known for his work on television series like The Outer Limits and The Rat Patrol, brought a sense of adventure and excitement to the music. Meanwhile, Rugolo, who had previously worked on films like The Girl Hunters and The Thin Man, contributed his expertise in jazz and big band arrangements. The music in this classic series complements the narrative an emotional tone by enhancing the on-screen action and highlighting the character's emotions. For instance, the opening theme, with its bold brass and energetic percussion, sets the stage for the high-flying adventures that follow. In contrast, the more introspective cues, featuring strings and woodwinds, capture the emotional turmoil of the characters during moments of introspection or conflict. Frontinier and Rugolo drew inspiration from the show's World War II setting, incorporating elements of 1940s swing and big band music into the score. 
This choice not only paid homage to the era but also added a layer of authenticity to the series. Composer Dominic Frontier shared his thoughts on the process, stating, We wanted to create something that felt genuine to the time period while still being engaging for modern audiences. Rugolo echoed this sentiment, adding, The music needed to serve the story, to amplify the emotions, and enhance the viewing experience. The result is a richly textured soundtrack that weaves seamlessly into the fabric of the show. From the thrilling aerial combat sequences to the quieter, more introspective moments, the music in Black Sheep Squadron plays a crucial role in shaping the audience's emotional response to the narrative. In crafting the score and soundtrack for this classic series, Frontier and Rugolo demonstrate their mastery of musical storytelling. Through their combined efforts, they created a musical tapestry that not only complements the on-screen action, but also stands on its own as a testament to their musical prowess. To loosen up a little bit. What, he's got to cut my time to loosen up? In the pilot episode of this classic, the men in Boyington's unit called him Gramps due to his age being a decade above theirs. However, this nickname was later changed to Pappy by a song written by one of his men, which was then popularized by war correspondents. The show gained significant popularity, with 32 out of every 100 TVs on in the USA tuned in during its airtime. Despite its success, it was eventually canceled. When nurses were introduced as regular cast members, they were referred to as Pappy's Lambs in the opening credits. As a nod to the show that was leading in the ratings at the time, Charlie's Angels. This clever reference showcased the friendly competition between the two shows. One of the most iconic scenes in the Black Sheep Squadron is the episode titled The Deadliest Enemy of All. In this episode, the squadron is hit by a string of bad luck and the men start to lose faith in their leader, Pappy Boynton. The scene that stands out is when Boynton gathers his men for a pep talk. The camera focuses on each man's face, capturing their skepticism and doubt. Boynton, played by Robert Conrad, delivers a powerful speech, reminding his men of their strengths and capabilities. Conrad's performance is exceptional, conveying Boynton's frustration and determination. The direction and cinematography also play a significant role in making this scene impactful. The use of close-ups and low-angle shots adds intensity to the scene, emphasizing the importance of Boyington's words. According to Conrad, that scene was crucial to the development of the character and the show. It was a turning point that showed Boyington's leadership and resilience. Another iconic scene is from the episode The Cat's Out of the Bag. In this episode, the squadron is tasked with destroying a Japanese ammunition dump. However, they soon realize that the dump is heavily guarded and their chances of success are slim. The scene that stands out is when the squadron decides to go ahead with the mission despite the risks. The camera captures the tension and anxiety on each man's face, building up to the climactic moment when they take off. The cinematography is particularly impressive in this scene, with sweeping shots of the planes taking off against the backdrop of the ocean and the sky. The direction and performances also add to the intensity of the scene, making it one of the most memorable moments in the series. According to director Lawrence Downey, that scene was a challenge to film, but it was also one of the most rewarding. The sense of camaraderie and teamwork among the cast and crew was incredible, and it showed on screen. These iconic scenes have had a lasting impact on audiences, showcasing the bravery, resilience, and camaraderie of the Black Sheep Squadron. They are a testament to the power of storytelling and the art of filmmaking, leaving a lasting impression on viewers and inspiring generations to come. Maybe we've both changed. Point is, he feels fine now, but his system's had a tremendous shock. And in the television series Black Sheep Squadron, Charles Napier, who played a role in the 1989 film Hit List alongside Rip Torn, later voiced Torn's original character, Zed, in the 1997 series Men in Black. The aerial footage for Black Sheep Squadron was primarily shot off the Southern California coast, with the island visible in the closing credits being the eastern tip of Santa Cruz Island, facing southeast. Interestingly, the Japanese Zero fighters depicted in the series were not actual Zero planes, but American at six Texan trainer aircraft, specially modified to resemble a Zero. Question, Ma? Well, I can take care of the books. The 1976 TV series, Black Sheep Squadron, gained significant popularity for its unique storyline, and engaging characters. 
The show, based on the true story of a World War II misfit fighter squadron, resonated with audiences due to its authentic portrayal of the camaraderie and challenges faced by the soldiers. The series showcased the human side of war, focusing on the pilots' personal lives and struggles, which set it apart from other war dramas. This approach allowed viewers to connect with the characters on a deeper level, contributing to the show's success. Moreover, Black Sheep Squadron played a crucial role in popularizing the image of the lone wolf fighter pilot, which has since become a common trope in popular culture. The show's influence can be seen in various forms of media, including movies, TV shows, and video games. Furthermore, the series sparked discussions on relevant social and cultural themes, such as the role of unconventional heroes in society. By highlighting the achievements of the Black Sheep Squadron, the show challenged traditional notions of heroism and contributed to a broader conversation about the value of diversity and inclusion. In addition, Black Sheep Squadron provided a platform for its diverse cast, which included actors from different racial and ethnic backgrounds. This representation was significant, given the lack of diversity in television at the time, and helped to pave the way for more inclusive casting in future productions. Overall, Black Sheep Squadron left an indelible mark on popular culture and contributed to important social discussions. Its authentic portrayal of the World War II era and its diverse cast continue to resonate with audiences today. We were really bored at that Villa La Cava. I mean, it was a... In the TV series Black Sheep Squadron, only one character, Major Gregory Pappy Boyington, was based on a real person. The other members were fictitious. It's interesting to note that the actual Gregory H. Pappy Boyington made a cameo appearance in the show. He played General Harrison Kenley in Season 1, Episode 14, and was also seen in the Season 1 finale, pinning a medal on Boyington in newsreel footage. The show depicted the pilots holding the triggers for extended periods, but in reality, they fired in 3-5 to five second bursts. This was due to the Corsair's limited ammunition supply, which only lasted for just under 30 seconds of continuous firing. Each inner gun carried 400 rounds, while the outer gun had 375 rounds. These details add a layer of authenticity to the show, making it a must-watch for aviation enthusiasts. Two men were formed two lines. The 1976 TV series, Black Sheep Squadron, received mixed reviews from critics. Some praised the show for its exciting aerial combat scenes, and engaging characters, while others criticized it for historical inaccuracies and over-the-top melodrama. Critic John J. O'Connor of the New York Times described the series as a reasonably entertaining, if not exactly distinguished, hour of melodrama and aerial combat. He commended the show's authentic-looking planes and convincing aerial sequences but noted that the characters were stereotypical and the dialogue was often corny. On the other hand, some critics were more dismissive of the show. Tom Shales of the Washington Post called it a cheesy, jingoistic, and historically dubious World War II drama. He criticized the show's cardboard characters and preposterous plotlines and argued that it was a disservice to the memory of the real Black Sheep Squadron. Despite the mixed critical reception, Black Sheep Squadron was a hit with audiences. The show averaged over 20 million viewers per episode and was one of the top-rated shows of the 1976-77 season. It also spawned a successful line of merchandise, including toy planes, model kits, and comic books. The show received one Emmy nomination for Outstanding Achievement in Film Sound Editing, but did not win. However, the show's star, Robert Conrad, received a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actor in a Television Series. Drama. The accolades received by Black Sheep Squadron are a testament to its popularity and enduring appeal. Despite its flaws, the show remains a classic example of 1970s television and a beloved piece of American pop culture. The nominations and recognition it received are a reflection of the hard work and dedication of the cast and crew who created a show that resonated with audiences and left a lasting impact on the world of television. Hey, boy, you saw a pop going there, in the first season, the TV series went by the name Beaba Black Sheep, but it was later changed to Black Sheep Squadron for its second season in syndication. The name change was due to NBC's cancellation of the show after its first season, only to bring it back in the following season to boost their poor ratings. The show features Robert Conrad's daughter, Nancy Conrad, who appeared 14 times as Lieutenant Nancy Gilmore. 
Her character added a personal touch to the series, making it even more interesting for viewers. One notable event in the show was when every member of the Black Sheep Squadron posed on the wings of one of their planes wearing St. Louis Cardinals baseball caps. The Cardinals had donated one cap for every Japanese plane the squadron shot down, resulting in caps for every member of the squadron, including the ground personnel. This act of generosity by the Cardinals organization added a unique element to the show's storyline. Take care. Uh, Greg, if uh, <laughs> by any chance we should run to your partner, Harajuku. During the filming of this classic, Black Sheep Squadron, the camaraderie among the cast was palpable. Robert Conrad, who played Major Gregory Pappy Boyington, was known for his pranks on set. He once filled a cast member's car with popcorn, causing quite a stir when the owner discovered it. The show's aerial scenes were a spectacle to behold. To achieve authenticity, they used actual World War II planes. However, these vintage aircraft often had quirks. Once, during a low-altitude flyby, a plane's engine stalled, leading to an emergency landing in a nearby field. Thankfully, everyone was safe, and the incident became a thrilling anecdote rather than a disaster. Behind the scenes, the crew faced unique challenges. For instance, they had to meticulously recreate the Pacific Island settings of the war. This involved transforming California's beaches into makeshift battlefields, a task that required immense creativity and resourcefulness. Moreover, the production team paid great attention to historical accuracy. They consulted with veterans and military historians to ensure the show's depiction of the war was respectful and true to life. This commitment to authenticity added depth and resonance to the series. In conclusion, the making of Black Sheep Squadron was filled with exciting challenges, camaraderie, and a dedication to authenticity. These behind-the-scenes stories offer a fascinating glimpse into the world of this classic TV series. <laughs> In the pilot episode of this classic, Black Sheep Squadron, the role of Lieutenant Robert Boyle was not played by Larry Minetti, but he took over the part from the second episode until the series ended in 1978. Initially, Jake Mitchell portrayed Boyle in the pilot, Red West joined the show in 1977, and was filming in August when he received the tragic news of his former boss and friend Elvis Presley's death. The cast and crew were deeply affected by this loss, as Presley was a significant figure in the entertainment industry and had a profound impact on their lives. Throughout the series, Minetti's portrayal of Boyle became a memorable part of the show, and his chemistry with the other actors contributed to the series' success. Meanwhile, West's addition to the cast brought a new dynamic to the show, and his performances were well received by fans and critics alike. In summary, the cast changes in Black Sheep Squadron brought new energy to the show, and the actors' dedication to their roles helped make it a beloved classic. Look, sir. Pappy, the Major. Take the orders only... from me, mister. Now get out. The 1976 TV series, Black Sheep Squadron, holds a significant place in film history. This classic show, based on the true story of World War II's MB612 Squadron, stood out for its unique subject matter and high-quality aerial combat scenes. It was one of the first shows to depict military aviation in such detail, paving the way for future filmmaking in this genre. The series, starring Robert Conrad as Colonel Gregory Pappy Boyington, was notable for its realistic portrayal of the camaraderie and trials faced by the men in the squadron. The show's influence can be seen in later films and TV series that explore similar themes such as the 2006 film, Flyboys, and the 2012 TV series, The River. Moreover, Black Sheep Squadron played a crucial role in popularizing the image of the Maverick pilot, a trope that has since been used in numerous films and TV shows. The series' success also led to an increase in public interest in World War II aviation, inspiring many viewers to learn more about this chapter in history. In addition, the show provided a platform for many aspiring actors and actresses, offering them the opportunity to showcase their talents. For instance, Dana Elkar, who played Major Sergeants Jig Stockton, went on to have a successful career in film and television. In conclusion, Black Sheep Squadron's legacy and influence extend far beyond its initial run. Its impact can be seen in the numerous films and TV series it inspired, the increased public interest in World War II aviation, and the careers it helped launch. This classic show continues to captivate audiences today, serving as a testament to the enduring appeal of well-crafted storytelling. Sorry, last call. You bums better hurry up! Let's go, let's go! The 
cancellation of the TV series Black Sheep Squadron in 1976 was partly due to the producers losing the rights to use actual World War II footage. This classic series, based on the exploits of a Marine fighter squadron during the war, was known for its authenticity, which was compromised when the original footage could no longer be used. Another interesting fact about Black Sheep Squadron is its theme song, which contains a line from the Whiff and Poof song by Bing Crosby featuring Fred Waring and the Glee Club. The lyrics were poor little lambs who have lost our way. Ba 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 were little black sheep who have gone astray ba ba are sung during the opening credits. One of the show stars, Anne Francis, had an impressive film career before joining the cast of Black Sheep Squadron. She appeared in four films that have been selected for the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. These films include Bad Day at Black Rock, Blackboard Jungle, Forbidden Planet, and Funny Girl. Francis's talent and versatility were on full display in these classic films. Captain? Well, you better take up the ancient art of whispering then. Because <laughs> I was way over yonder, the other side. In the opening credits of the TV series, Black Sheep Squadron, viewers might notice a chain link fence in the background as the wheel chocks are pulled. This small detail is just one example of the show's attention to authenticity. The character known as Washing Machine Charlie, often depicted in the series as a Japanese bomber pilot, was not a fictional creation. In fact, he was mentioned in William Manchester's memoir of the Pacific War, Goodbye Darkness, as well as in the TV show McHale's Navy. The Zeros used in Black Sheep Squadron were originally built for the movie Tora. Tora! 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 Further adding to the show's commitment to realism, by using actual planes from a classic war film, the creators of Black Sheep Squadron were able to bring an added level of authenticity to their storytelling. <laughs> huh? Tom, how do you manage to have a dog? Isn't that against regulations? In the mid-1970s, Robert Conrad, the lead actor of the TV series Black Sheep Squadron, made an interesting decision. He had planned to hire Michael Landon to direct a few episodes of the show. However, Landon was deeply committed to his own NBC series, Little House on the Prairie, which made it impossible for him to join the Black Sheep Squadron team. This anecdote is a testament to the bustling TV landscape of the 1970s, where actors and directors often juggled multiple projects at the same network. The story also subtly highlights the dedication and work ethic required to produce successful shows like Black Sheep Squadron and Little House on the Prairie. Despite the scheduling conflict, the Black Sheep Squadron continued to soar, captivating audiences with its thrilling storylines and memorable characters. The show became a classic in its own right, leaving a mark on the television landscape that resonates even today. In the TV series Black Sheep Squadron, which first aired in 1976, one of the show's pilots, Donald Pugh, met a tragic end during a stunt for the show. Pugh's parachute failed to open, leading to his untimely death at the age of 29. This shocking incident occurred on the set of the series' final episode, adding a sad note to the show's conclusion. The production team was left in mourning, and the event served as a stark reminder of the risks often associated with filmmaking. You're doing a good job. Thanks, man. My job the flag. Did Black Sheep Squadron leave a lasting impression on you? For many, this classic 1976 TV series not only provided thrilling entertainment, but also influenced their perspective on cinema. The show, based on the true story of a World War II flying squadron, resonated with viewers due to its unique blend of action, history, and character development. It was a departure from the typical war dramas of the time, making it a captivating and unforgettable experience. We'd love to hear about your personal experiences and memories related to Black Sheep Squadron. How did it impact you? Did it inspire a newfound interest in history or cinema? Share your stories with us and engage with others in the comments. Perhaps you discovered a new appreciation for the bravery and camaraderie of soldiers, or maybe you were fascinated by the authentic portrayal of wartime aviation. Whatever your takeaway, we'd love to hear it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Together, let's celebrate the enduring legacy of Black Sheep Squadron and its influence on generations of viewers. Hey! 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 Hey!